And, you know, when you talk to this one Marine I interviewed, who's, you know, loves his country, loves the Marines, you know, uh, you can't put him down. He said, um, we're tired. You know, my guys are tired. Our equipment is shot. You know, the equipment's not supposed to be used for four years. It's really, you know, supposed to be used for like four minutes. Everyone's dead. You put it back on the, in the boat and you take it back home. You don't hang around. And he said something I never knew about the Marines. He goes, Marines are not s trained or equipped to stand around and occupy. Basically, Marines come, they kick the door, and they kill anyone who raises a rifle, and they leave the rest of the Army to do. The Army comes in, cleans up the blood, and occupies and wins hearts and minds and cools it out. So it's like you have you know, the Army and the Marines acting as an occupying force in Iraq. I had an amazing conversation today. I was driving with a cab driver, very friendly man. English was so-so. Looked at his license, his name, uh, Mohammed something. I, went, I said, uh, I was trying to be polite. I said, sir, are, are you Swedish? Because I didn't want to go, hey, where are you from? You can't be Swedish. He, you know, I, who knows? He could be Swedish. Could be born and raised here. So I said, sir, um, are you from Sweden? And he went, no. And he said with great hesitation, I am from Iraq. Because he could tell I'm from America. So with great regret, he told me I'm from Iraq. I went, and there was this uncomfortable moment. And I said, man, I am really, really sorry about what's happening over there. And he went, yeah, my wife is there. I went, whew, is she OK? And he said, well, it's very dangerous. And we had this fascinating conversation all the way from Orlando Airport to this hotel. And uh, he, just, he just went over there. I said, you went? He goes, yeah, I go over and visit my wife. They're trying to work out the visa to get her here. Very nice man. And so I said, what do you think about America? And he said, well, you know, I'm glad Saddam is gone and you guys took him out of power. Great. But then you occupied. Not great. Now we're mad. And I said, so what should we do? He said, in his, his own way of saying it, he goes, go on the boats and be ready to come in if we need help. Just keep your eye on, on it, but leave. Observe from, he goes, you know, you're, I go, satellites. He goes, yeah, uh, look down. And, um, and he, he never said boat or ship. I forget what he said, call it. You get in your box and, and be in the water next to Iraq. So I said, yeah, basically sa sanctions and surveillance like Clinton did. He went, yeah. He goes, we'll handle the rest. Um, and he even, you know, he knew who Paul Bremer was, who uh, fired the, Iran the Iraqi army, you know, in his w effort to debathify Iraq. And he went, oh, Bremer. I went, Paul Bremer. He goes, yes, bad. <laughs> and it was just, it, just interesting to hear him. And he said, yeah, Marines came into the house I'm, I was staying in a, a month ago, and I spoke English with them. <laughs> I go, were they nice? He said, yes. So he doesn't hate America. It's mm. amazing. He doesn't hate America. He, he said, you know, very brave. And they got Saddam. Thank you. Now go. <laughs> and he's the guy who gets blown up at the supermarket. You know, just a normal Iraqi guy. Very nice man. You know, I, I, w I was in Iran for five days a few months ago just to meet people from Iran. Everyone I met was nice. No one told me, get out. I asked all these people, what do you think of America? They go, we love America. We've all been to America. We want to be like America. We, you know, we used to be like America before the Shah was deposed. This guy, my, the driver, uh, Mohammed, he, um, he said, I've, San Diego, I spent two weeks there. I've been to Hollywood. I've been to New York. I was like, wow. I go, what'd you think? He goes, great, beautiful. I go, New York is fun, right? He goes, like, New York. I'm like, damn, man, why does he have to die? Why do we have to be at war with him? You know? So none of this stuff has to happen. You know, now the president, well, we had, you know, Iran. I'm like, oh, no, not Iran. I met all these wonderful people in Tehran. You know, I don't want them to die. All these beautiful women there. Oh, great food. Mm. Ever had Persian caviar? Oh. So when was there last year? It's beautiful, right?
And, and uh, Tehran is a city. It's on the move, man. They're building stuff. They're not broke. They're busy. Cars everywhere. People are going to work doing it, you know? You know, and, and apparently great skiing. It was, it, it's an amazing city. Yeah, I'm a Dini Jad. I don't think he runs it well. He subsidizes the gas. They're going to run out of gas. And, you know, people drive for too cheap. Uh, that, and everyone has their, you know, it's very polluted. You walk outside, you're like, oh. Um, but I was never in danger. Did you ever feel in danger walking around being a white dude? Nah. Walk anywhere. People hear me speak English. They come up, excuse me, sir, or where are you from? I'm in America. They're like, San Francisco, okay. I'm like, Iran, I'm shaking hands. You know, I know a, an ex, uh, someone who's exiled from there, and I called her, and I said, hey, I'm going to go to Iran. She, oh, she said, great, I want you to meet my family, and you'll have home cooking every night. So she gave me all these phone numbers, and she called them all and said, Henry's coming, and I was just Shireen's friend. And every night, man, they rolled it out. You are Shireen's friend. We miss her so much. I said, yeah. So I took all these photos of Shireen's family and sent them to her, and she got very emotional about it. You, you go like Tehran just to inform yourself. Or yeah, exactly, just to inform myself. So, because I, I had nothing about Iran except books and Iranian people I met in America. And I said, what would happen if I went to Iran? And they all said the same thing. They're all emphatic. Henry, you'd love it. You'd love Tehran. Iranian people have been telling me that for years. So whenever I meet Iranians, I went to school with Iranians. We had boarding students at that high school. And they taught me how to curse and Farsi and... They helped me with my math. It's the only way I got out of high school is a guy named Milad Kurami who got me out of help me with my math. Very smart guy. <clears throat> and um, so, uh, they, and oh, so I've always been curious about Iran because I used to know Iranian guys. And whenever I meet someone from Iran, like a driver in a car or someone somewhere, you know, someone on the radio, they go, "I'm from Iran." I'm like, "I'm very curious about your country." And they go, "You, you, you should go." I go, "I'd be okay." They're like, "Yeah, you'd be okay. You'd be better than okay." People would love to meet you. I went, oh, and I went, and people were nice to me, mm -hmm. wonderful to me. And they're all like very impressed. You know, like you know, the guards at the at the airport. They took my passport. They're like, in America, they look at Mary. They're like, all right, you got balls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so yeah, I hope those people don't get bombed, because in America, all you hear all you know, the Iranians are all crazy. They're crazy. No, I didn't meet any crazy people. It's like that old Sting song. I think I think the Russians love their children too. <laughs> yeah, and that's what you meet when you go to these places. You just meet folks, and they're just trying to get through. That's it. That's all you meet: milkmen, plumbers, mailmen, truck drivers, and they all they say, "Hey, man, I just want some clean water. I got a kid. I want a kid to go to school." You'll hear that in Calcutta, and Columbus, Ohio. I've been to both. 